Time now for Focus, your weekly news program about Lorraine City Schools from WLCS TV 20. Now your host, Ron Bacalar. Welcome once again to Focus. Now, just the other day I was sitting around thinking about various things and what's going on in our community, in our state, in our world. And you know, the word pride came to mind. And, and I thought about that word pride, just exactly what does it mean? So, being the former educator that I once upon a time was, I went to my New World Dictionary <laughs> and I looked up the word pride. The number one definition, an over high opinion of oneself, exaggerated self-esteem, conceit. Then there was a second definition, proper respect for oneself self-respect. A third definition, delight or satisfaction in one's own achievements. And then there was a fourth, a person or thing in which pride is taken. And I think that's where we want to go today with our focus program and to help us better understand just exactly what we mean by pride. And you may have seen the bulletin boards, the billboards, Lorraine's Pride Initiative, working together for a healthier Lorraine. It is my pleasure to introduce to my immediate left, Brenda Taylor Hines, the project director for Lorraine Pride. And to my far left, we have Nancy Toth, a health educator with the Lorraine Health Department. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I also understand, and this was not in my dictionary, that pride is, in our particular situation, uh, a meaning beyond. I think, I think you're right. Pride embraces the definitions that you described, and I think we might want to add a fifth one that stands for partners, realistically, integrating durable empowerment. That's the acronym, but that's also how it is described and defined. It is a federal initiative that received $1.4 million in funding for the next four years mm. to integrate with our partners health and mental health services for residents who live in the city of Lorraine. So we have an awesome responsibility and opportunity to help the city of Lorraine's residents access services that are designed to improve their health and mental health status and help them participate in services that are going to make their whole lives better. And it consists of myself as a project director, Nancy Toth is our health educator, and we have 13 partners. We have a steering committee. We have the executive director of the Alcohol, Drug, and Addiction Services Board, and we have a number of volunteers that are helping us to implement this program strategically. So we're going to talk about some of those different components and some of the different roles and responsibilities. And we are just excited that we have gotten through year one, and there are some accomplishments that we want everybody to know about. We're placing it on our uh, digital billboard as we speak about some of those things that have gone extremely well and some of the challenges that we're still facing in terms of getting people to come into the different screening sites and, and get or receive a health screening and participate in many of our programs and services. So that's the good thing about it. We have three more years to go. We're looking for more partners and we're looking for more participation from community residents. So. One of the things, um, too, uh, Ron, about the PRIDE initiative, uh, the word that we chose, PRIDE, is that we are trying to bring pride and resiliency back into the city of the Lorraine with this grant. When people struggle with loss of income, they struggle with the loss of pride a lot of times. Mm, they yes. struggle with loss of self-esteem. They struggle with stress and anxiety, and uh, a lot of people struggle with depression. So we're, we've brought programs in with this um, grant to help them to deal with some of these issues, to bring back their pride, bring back some resiliency um, into their lives. I think one of the, uh, the other things I want to mention to the general public is that we received this, <coughs> excuse me, this award on October 15th. We had a press conference to announce the receipt of this award, award on January the 20th. 
We kicked off our program and services with screening, and that started on February the 1st. And then we participated with all of our partners about two months of training for all of the different programs and services that we were selected. And with our 13 partners, and I just want to mention some of those uh, individuals who are working with us, Lorain County Health and Dentistry. They're one of the sites where people can receive medical vouchers for medical assistance as well as dental services. The Lorain County Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services Board provides the transportation to individuals once they're screened so that they can access <coughs> program and services. So there are a lot of partners who are doing things to make sure that the residents of the City of Lorraine are actually able to participate in services along that mental health health continuum. So if individuals have mental health needs, if there's a need for counseling on depression, if there's a need for treatment services, we have a number of programs and services. So this is a unique opportunity mm -hmm. to kind of talk about those programs mm -hmm. and services and talk about how people can access the services. We've done a lot of work creating materials, brochures, digital billboards, messaging, so that people, no matter where they are, can get a better understanding of what this Pride Initiative is all about. I mean, there's still a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. and we have some plans to be a little bit more extensive with our services as we move into year two. Nancy's role, and she can talk more about that, but she has a key role in terms of helping to educate the community uh, at different venues and sites about what are the program and services. Some of our messaging, and I'm really kind of proud to present it. Um, this is one of our little flyers, and you may not, you know, <laughs> come up too clearly, but it's really one of our promotional pieces that talks about how do you access these services. Now we can have all these programs and services, but the key is people have to know they exist in the community, know where these services are in the community, and how to access those, those services. So we have five screening sites that are centrally located, and once individuals receive a health screening with a cute little patient tool, how would you describe that patient I tool? I think the patient tool is basically a um, an Etch-a-Sketch or a Game Boy type looking tool. It's just a little box that they answer a question at a time and everything's very confidential. The first several questions that they answer give them a unique ID number so as they go through programs they are uh, referred to by an ID number so no one really knows who they are or um, I mean they are a human being obviously but um, it's very very confidential so as they go through the programs they are just by this confidential number. Um, it's very streamlined, so when they go from agency to agency to agency because of HIPAA laws, it's, everything's very private, but we are able to um, make it very comfortable for them to follow from agency to agency um, using the HIPAA laws as well through this ID number that they're assigned. And the patient tool is also available in Spanish. Yes. So people can, they get the tool, they're sitting someplace private, and if they need Spanish, it's just a matter of selecting the Spanish option and going through and completing the questions. And then once they've completed those questions, based on how they respond, they're given a referral list for the seven or eight different programs and services that are available through the Pride Initiative. And once those referrals are made, we are contacted, and, and for example, in addition to be the, being the project director, I have this responsibility for the jobs program piece. And so once an individual is screened, I'm making the phone call to, to inform them of when that next training is, arranging the transportation. So the good thing about the Pride Initiative is that we know that transportation, or lack of transportation, is probably one of the biggest barriers. So with the Lakata organization, we're able to arrange transportation where they're actually bringing folks to the jobs program site. And we're providing the 20 hours, and then there's some post-jobs activities. I mean, there's some things that we've learned about this, you know, tra lack of transportation being one of the issues, at least for the jobs program. Lack of child care has kind of come up number yes. three when we looked at some of the barriers. And then providing incentives for participation you know, is, is also something. So whether it's a gift card, we're trying to work on individuals getting like gas cards. So we've done a pretty good job of getting people from a screening to an actual program. 
And when you're screened, it's not a kind of a one-size-fits-all. It's more or less um, when you're answering your questions, you're going to be um, custom designing your own programs because everybody isn't going to be fit into the same programs depending on what their issues are. Um, some people may need jobs, uh, skills, employability workshop when someone else may not. They may need brief couples training or brief, brief couples um, counseling. Uh, someone else may need strengthening families programs and brief couples counseling and jobs project. So depending on how you're answering your questions is how you're going to custom design, design the programs that you're going to be slotted into. Mm -hmm. So it's a very nice program and a very nice um, system that we have. Okay, uh, listening to everything that you've stated so far, now I'm going to play the individual sitting back watching and listening to this program and I'm asking myself do I really qualify for something like this? What exactly can we tell the people out there is a criteria for going ahead with the screening to see if there is something available to me in order that I can bring that pride back mm -hmm. into myself and then within the city in which I live. I have a response and then Nancy can follow up with this. I think if people are experiencing depression. Depression, okay. Sad, uh, lonely, anxiety. If they have become recently unemployed. Mm -hmm. Okay. If the stress of marriage and marital relations has been affected by a recent unemployment, uh, a recent separation, recent loss, they're a candidate for the Pride Initiative. If you're having difficulty with your relationships with your children, mm -hmm. because children are also affected by family stress, you're a candidate for the Pride program. So it's those kinds of criteria, uh, children who are having difficulty functioning in school. Many of our partners the Lorraine High School, the um, health department, uh, health and dentistry, mm -hmm. uh, El Centro, have programs that support the Pride Initiative. So I think that you've got to look at your situation and say, if I'm struggling in any area of my life, mm -hmm. then it's certainly Pride represents an opportunity for me to kind of kind of step up and say, wow, let me investigate this. Let me look at this opportunity. Uh, there are no costs for the screening. Right. Now, I think the key <laughs> word that came out of everything you've said is struggling. If I'm struggling with something in my life, mm -hmm. I am a possible <laughs> candidate. And the screening then would become more definitive as exactly. to how this initiative is going to be able to help me. The screening yes. helps us really assess. It's like going to the doctor and getting okay. your annual assessment. And the, it's painless. There's no shots. <laughs> <laughs> and the you're assessment taking, doesn't cost you're just you anything. Answer, yeah, you're just answering some questions uh -huh. yeah. on a little tool. A game, like I said, it looks like a little Game Boy. And there are probably some people that are um, not necessarily comfortable even answering like a little Game Boy. So we have a paper tool. You can do it on a paper as hmm. well. Um, it's really up to you, but the Game Boy little one's just easy to do it, and it, and it comes up one question at a time. It can take between five minutes or 20 minutes, depending on how detailed mm -hmm. you get with the questions. Some people may have um, more issues in their life, so they may have more questions that come up depending on how they're answering the questions. The best thing is to take the screening. Um, you may find out that you have more issues in your life that maybe you think you don't. Mm -hmm. You know, some people may um, maybe there, uh, for instance, I was unemployed for a while. I've been unemployed twice in my life. I find that it's very, very stressful when you don't have income coming in, when you can't put food on your table, you can't put gas in your car, you have to really divvy out your money and how you're going to pay your bills. It becomes very, very stressful. Um, if, you're, if you're under stress, if you've been unemployed for maybe a year or so, uh, you can come in and take the tool we might be able to get you into um, the, um, the, the employment skills workshop or there may be uh, maybe a depressing, depression counseling. Some people I find that um, they don't realize perhaps that they're actually clinically depressed. They, mm -hmm. um, 
they have symptoms and they don't realize that they have the symptoms. So this tool that you take can actually diagnose whether you have symptoms of depression or anxiety and there are there's help out there for you and this help is no cost through this program so there there's things that we may be able to help you out with that you may not even realize if you don't take the screening the screenings confidential it's no cost a lot of the clinics that we have are walk-in for instance the Lorain County Health and Dentistry when you come in there on a Monday uh, between um, 9 and noon or a Friday, I'm sorry, Monday between one and four, and a Friday between nine and noon. It's you just walk in. You just walk into the front door, look to the right, and the gals are sitting there. You can just take it, you know, right there without making an appointment or anything. And one of the things that we're finding with the screening is we're not just talking about individuals. We're talking about people becoming informed about themselves and perhaps others in their family or right. their friends who may also need the service. And we've had that quite a bit where people have come in and maybe they don't have any issues. They, they take the, the screening because they're curious okay. and then they, they say, boy, you know, my aunt or my brother-in-law exactly. or someone else may be able to utilize this. You know, there's some things that are going on in their lives. I'm going to bring them back and we've been able to help people that way as well. Sometimes just by word of mouth, it's it's, so it's important to understand that the gateway to our program and services is through screening. Yes. How do you access Pride? You've got to go through a screening process first. That screening opens the door for the program and services. And I am so fortunate to have a copy of our of programs, programs and services. Yes. And I just simply wanted to just read the names of those programs okay. and we can kind of talk about some of the key ones um, a little bit later in the show. The jobs program uh, helps people find jobs. It helps them uh, develop a skill set so that they can either um, develop new strategies to find employment, return to school, or do some volunteer work. We have the Brief Couples Therapy Program, which is eight sessions, and it's a means of solving problems with couples uh, and their relationship. The Older Adult Depression Program, involves a therapist um, helping individuals set realistic goals for how they're going to deal with some of their issues. The 12-step facilitation program is structured to assist clients in early recovery from alcohol abuse, alcoholism, drug abuse, and addiction. There is a medical voucher program and clients without a regular doctor may qualify for a set number of medical and dental visits. There's a Strengthening Families program, which is a national model. Many of our programs that we have in place are what we call evidence-based program, proven to be effective programs. So the Strengthening Families program is one that uh, recognizes parenting and family skills training, and it's designed a current program that we have for families with three to 16-year-old children in their families. The Adolescent Depression program is 12 to 16 session programs that involves a therapist with children. The Teen Screen is a program that is housed with Lorraine City Schools and is designed to help teens who've been thinking about suicide, have had those mm. suicidal thoughts or ideation. The coping and support training called CAST is a suicide risk prevention program. It's also in the high schools. And the transportation to these programs and services is available with the Lakata program. So these are our programs and services. And with this flyer that has become a one, probably one, I want to say one of our more requested yeah. um, flyers helps people understand if you want to access our programs and services, you must get screened first. Mm -hmm. And then once you're screened, this tool prints out a referral for the programs and services that we have available. Mm -hmm. So we're doing much more with our advertising, with the billboards, with our public service announcements, with our email blasts, with brochures and information that says, get screened first, these services are available to you. So. Uh, each time you two talked about the screening, mm -hmm. you mentioned the word confidentiality. Mm -hmm. And I wanna pursue that because to, again, the average individual out there, I don't want to be an open book. I've got a problem, but I don't want the world to know about it. And that's, from my point of view, a reason why so many remain within their problem. To what degree is this information 
utilize. I'll let Nancy address that because she's talked a little bit about HIPAA, which guides okay. this process. It's kept very, very confidential. There are some statistics that are taken because it is a grant and the government does want statistics. So, But again, there, everything is done by that unique ID number. So no one knows you know, that you particular as an individual with a name are going through this treatment, um, but they do, do keep some statistics about an individual, um, a number that is going through a treatment so that the government has the statistics that they need. But no one, like I said, is going to know that um, John Smith has gone through 12-step program because you are going through as an individual unique ID number. The only, in, in the number that they're keeping is that um, you have taken a screening at um, a particular place, like you've come into the health department, that's part of your number. Um, health department might be number one as far as the um, screening sites. It's screening site number one, so that's part of your unique ID number. Uh, the last four digits of your social security number, if you know it, would be part of your, you know, your unique ID number. Um, your birth date might be part of your unique ID number. So it's eight digits that they come up with, and that's how it's going to follow you through. So no one's ever going to know that you went through 12-step pro program or brief couples counseling program. You're just going to follow through as that unique ID number. Mm -hmm. It's very, very confidential. Now the screening itself, is there just the one screening that an individual takes? I mean, Yeah, once you do that one screening, okay. you've done your screening. That's going to set you up. Um, the screening will take all the information. Um, that tool be, will be docked on a computer docking station. All that information will be downloaded into the computer and processed and you will get um, spit out at the end basically a set of referrals for all the programs that you then qualify for based on how you answered your questions. So you want to answer your questions as truthfully yes. as possible mm -hmm. so that you get the proper referrals to the proper programs that you should qualify for. Um, you want to qualify for as many as you possibly can, if, and you don't want to qualify for something that you don't need either. Mm -hmm. So you do want to be as truthful as possible. And I think the exception to the one screening response is that the 12-step facilitation program that is housed at Lakata does do an additional assessment if someone is actively involved with alcohol or other drugs they may not be appropriate to participate in that 12-step facilitation program as designed and so the referral would take them to a, a different level of care Depending, and that's something yeah. that's just, just kind of built in the system. Yeah, our 12-step is a brief treatment program and if a person and it's kind of designed for those who have have been like unemployed for the last year or two or le you know basically less than two years mm -hmm. and they've started to develop problems they've started to develop maybe started to drink a little mm -hmm. too much or started to rely on maybe sleeping pills too much you know started to develop a problem and we're trying to nip it in the bud it's not really designed to be for someone who has had a chronic problem for a long period of time and sometimes we will pick up people through our screening that way and that would be a person who maybe has picked up has come through mm -hmm. the 12 step program and they need something a little more intensive than what our 12 step could provide so they may come into Lakata and then go through a different 12 step or a different type of program that Lakata could serve their, their purposes better so our programs are designed to be more brief treatments to nip those problems in the bud that have just begun. So. Okay. I've listened to what you've had to say about potential candidates. I'm now feeling comfortable about the screening. I want help. I need help. What's my next step? Where do I go from there? Well, it depends on what <clears throat> programs and services have been identified with the patient tools. We need screening. He needs How screening do I get first. the screening? Where do I go for that? Well, One thing you can do is you can, yeah, you can call a number. We have a number, 282-9920. Um, 282-9920. 9920. Uh-huh. I can remember when I clump them together. 282-9920. Uh-huh. Okay. 
And that would give you, um, if you call that number, they would be able to give you several different screening sites. Some are walk-in screenings. Okay. Some are by appointment. Okay. It would be up to you whether you want to do one by walk-in or by appointment. And they would let you know where those screening sites are. The screening sites are actually Lorain County Health and Dentistry, the Nord Center, uh, Lorain City Health Department, El Centro Services, and Lakata. Those are where our screening sites are. So you would go to one of those screening sites either by appointment or by walk-in and go ahead and do your screening. Once your screening is done, then you are, you'd get your little um, flyer with all your referrals mm -hmm. and then you would pick which program you want to start with. If you only have one program, then you would obviously right. go with that one. But if you have several programs that you're qualified for, then you can pick and choose which program you would want to start with. The one stipulation that we do have is that you start with something like jobs or brief couples, something other than Lorain County Health and Dentistry. And part of the, the issue there is that they were so inundated, so many people were using the voucher program that Lorain County Health and Dentistry was just over, they were inundated with mm. those voucher programs. So we're trying to stagger. And so we do ask that if you are, do qualify for medical vouchers, as well as other programs that you use at least one program first and then you would um, use your medical vouchers or your dental vouchers. So Nancy has described one way. The other mm -hmm. thing that happens, it's kind of like a, a, a multiple approach, is that if you've been referred to, let's say, the jobs program, I'm also going to get a list of everybody twice a week of who has signed up for the jobs program because it is conducted, facilitated monthly. So, in addition to your getting a list of options, I receive, the different providers receive a list of individuals. So I'm going to call you and, and find out which of those dates are you interested in participating in the jobs program. Okay. okay. Strengthening Families, I believe, has the same thing. Yes. They would get a list and so does 12 Step. They yes. would get a list. So we're being a little proactive as well on our end in calling these people to see if we can go ahead and get them scheduled for some of their programs. So we don't necessarily wait around for people to call once they've you know, received their screening and gotten their list. We're calling them as yeah. well. I think it's important that people feel that they're just not a number. Right. I mean, we do a lot of follow-up. Once you have been screened and we have your phone numbers, we're making those phone calls, we're sending out letters, we're doing the postcards. We're not leaving you once you get through the program. We are there until you find a job or do some volunteer work or return to school. Um, I think the number aspect that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. Brenda, is more for, along the lines of Confidentially. Protecting one's right. anonymity. Right. Okay. But yeah. you're still an individual you're still and you're a human being cared for and very much. You want to be helped. Right. So the recognition that I can fit into this. There's something that I need help. Uh, I'm comfortable now understanding the screening process. So my next move is to get on that phone and dial two, not dial. We <laughs> don't have those anymore, do we? 282-9920. 9920 yes. yeah. and we're off and running. Yes, yes. we are. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, there there have been some good things that happened, but I also want to acknowledge there have been a few challenges. You know, we are still trying to remove uh, or deal with the stigma associated with mental health, which I think is a big barrier for people really wanting to come in and talk about mental health issues mm -hmm. because there are cultural issues uh, that are also, uh, I think, responsible for creating a reluctance among some people in the community about mental health needs and mental health services. So we're working to address that as well. and and. We're focusing on our media campaign, our marketing campaign, and we were strategic year one in helping people understand the PRIDE program is here. Mm -hmm. We are one of those three communities nationwide that received the Community Resiliency and Recovery Initiative grant from SAMHSA, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Association, to help the city of Lorraine address some of the mental health and health needs of its community. And so, as we move to the second year, we want to look at some specific messaging around depression, around mental health, 
around addiction and helping people understand that this program is here to help you address those needs as well. Ladies, our time is just about up. I don't know if we've covered all the bases that you <laughs> want. I'm sure we could do a lot more, but are there any last points that you feel need to be made? I want to people to hear that it doesn't cost them anything to get screened. It's it free. It, screening doesn't cost you a thing. And it's for citizens of the city, city of, of Lorraine. Lorraine. That is Not correct. The county, the city. That yes, correct. that's correct. Okay. Yes. And uh, last opportunity, our number again is 282-9920. And just in case you didn't hear that, it's 282-9920, 282-9920. Jump on the bandwagon. Get that pride back in your life. Until next time, Lorraine. Thank you. This has been a production of Lorraine City Schools, TV20, WLCS. To purchase a high quality copy of the program you just viewed, please call Lorraine City Schools Television at 282-8400. There is a place where a total stranger will give you their blood. A place where someone you never knew will save your child from drowning. Where a person who doesn't look like you, talk like you, or dress like you will give you shelter after a flood. That place is called America, where we look out for each other. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America. Jenny, Jenny dear, don't forget my dress for the fashion show. We went and want to look my best now. Jenny, Jenny, we started our book report. Here's the cover. Yeah, now all we need is a beginning, a middle, and an end. Jenny, 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 Jenny. Hi, honey. Are you feeling blue? What's wrong with being blue? Well, where should I start? <laughs> if you're a teen dealing with stress, there's help. Visit the Will Rogers Institute website for a free booklet about teen stress and how you can de-stress your life. Right.